And we start with techniques and we start off with power group where we have y equals to fx power n. The derivative is simply bring out the power to the front, reduce the power by one and then differentiate inside. Next up with exponential where we have only two types y equals to e power fx and a to the power of fx. The derivative is simply f prime x e power fx and similar for a fx just that it times a ln a where a is bigger than zero. Logarithms very similar to exponentials as well. Two types, log fx and log a fx. Derivative are simply f prime over fx. Same thing for log a fx, just that you times by a one over log a. Again, a bigger than zero. Trigonometry, six types, and I'll group them into three pairs of two: sine, cosine, tangent, secant, and last pair, cosecant, cotangent. Why is that so? You see the derivatives, and you know. If fx is in radians, or your derivative is in radians, f prime x cosine fx for sine fx, f prime x minus sine fx for cosine fx, f prime x secant square fx, f prime x secant fx tangent fx, and for the last two, f prime x minus cosecant fx cotangent fx, and lastly, minus f prime x cosecant square fx. As you can tell, there are some relationship between the pairs. If dy this is in degree mode, take every deriv derivative and times pi over 1, 8, 0. Inverse trigonometry, only three types, sine inverse, cosine inverse, and tangent inverse. The derivative for sine inverse and cosine inverse are pretty much similar. For sine inverse, it's basically f prime x over root 1 minus fx squared. Same thing for your cosine inverse, just that there's a negative sign. For tangent inverse, it's different. It is f prime x over 1 plus fx squared. For sine inverse and cosine inverse though, modulus of fx must be less than 1. Moving on to your rules, we have the product rule, and we have y equals to ux times vx, because it is product, so plus d right dx equals to u prime v plus v prime u. Similarly, we have the quotient rule, where we have y equals to u over v. dy dx is simply, well, quotient, so it's minus, right? So u prime v minus v prime u over v squared. So take note, divide by v squared. Differentiation by first principles, well, we let y equals to fx, and we let the derivative basically be, as the limit of h approaches 0, fx plus h minus fx over h. So this is kind of like a gradient, right? So this is basically differentiation by first principles. Then we have parametric differentiation, y equals to gt, x equals to ht, so to find dy dx is simply dy dt over dx dt, your quantitative rate of change, right? Which is basically g prime t over h prime t. Lastly, we have the implicit differentiation, the core idea that d dx of y equals to dy dx. And therefore, if we have an equation xy plus sine fy equals to e to the power of gy plus ln hy, just to apply the basic rules. So product rule here to give us y plus x dy dx plus f prime y times dy dx cosine fy equals to g prime y times e power gy times dy dx and lastly plus h prime y over hy times your dy dx. We finally have application and we start off with normals and tangents. To find the equation of the normals and tangents, we have to use equation of a straight line and the general form is given by y minus y0 equals to m bracket x minus x0 where x0, y0 is any point that lies on the line and the m is the gradient of the line. Gradient of a tangent is dy dx at any particular point x. Same thing for normal, just that it's given by minus d1 over dy dx equals to minus dx dy. Moving on to rate of change, well, to give you some examples, dy dt, dx dt, dv dr, and da dr. For any first derivative, dy dt for example equals to 1 over dt dy, but any further derivative such as d2y dx2 is not 1 over dx2 d2y, nor is it 1 over d2x dy2. dy dx equals to dy dt times dt dx equals to dy dt divided by dx dt as your condensate rate of change. Lastly, we have stationary points, and we just need to equate dy dx equals to 0. There are only three types of stationary points, your local maximum or local minimum. They are local because they may not be the actual maximum or minimum point of the graph. Lastly, we have the stationary point of inflection. To test the nature of the stationary point, we have two types of tests, the first being the first derivative test known as the sine test. First you draw the table starting with x, and with a minus a, a plus, where a minus basically a value slightly less than a, 
and a plus being a value more slightly more than a. A basically is the value where dy ds equals to zero. You just need one outcome, I'm showing you all four outcomes, and then you just finally draw the shape of the graph. If the n shape is a maximum, if it's the two shapes as you're seeing right here is an inflection point, if it's a u shape, it's a minimum point. Alternatively, you can use the second derivative test, where you calculate d2y dx2 and plug in the x value. If it's less than zero, it's a maximum, more than zero is a minimum, if it's equal to zero, well, you don't know.